ye we are recording right now. Great. I have a really good news for you guys. <laughs> the good news is that today's workshop is a way, way better than the yesterday one because we're gonna draw something on the screen. Yeah, it's not about like printing some text or string or number. We're gonna uh, use the, uh, the Python in Grasshopper. Also, I uh, gave you guys the link uh, to download the plugin for the Grasshopper. So inside of the plugin, there's multiple uh, things I couldn't remember right now, but uh, there's some mapping uh, plugin or image processing plugin that we're gonna look through everything individually. So um, for those who not yet install a uh, graphical plugin from my the medium, I highly recommend you download right now and then just install um, the plugin in the right component folder, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think, uh, I think I'm good to go. Great, let me share my screen. So um, today's agenda is a little advanced, you know, uh, Python, particularly for visualizing something in the, using, uh, using the Island Python, which is a little bit different than actual Python. It's like a C sharp of a Microsoft version of a Python. But you guys don't need to worry about syntax is gonna be the same. So particularly today, we are going to um, um, import some real world data, such as CSV file, or JSON file, or GeoJSON file, which is very standard data for the you know, um, visualization um, field. And then we also have some uh, image, image processing plugin uh, and then I'm gonna give you guys some sort of uh, examples how we you know, take advantage or utilize um, this kind of individual example or exercise for your real practice. And also before I uh, forgot, I, I would like to mention that at the end of the day, we want to, to create our own sort of visualization. So I highly recommend you guys looking at I don't know, we, we are living in globe, right? It's a different place and different city, different world, uh, the country. So just simply download some data they're interested in, and then we try to visualize uh, your own data, okay? Um, to be honest, um, I'm not sure because even if I have some, uh, the, the level of the uh, implementation, all the way from um, the simple Python to TypeScript version of um, the, app, the uh, visual, visualization apping, uh, app application things. But it, it, it depends on you guys. Like if you're familiar with the using the Grasshopper, it's totally fine. But what I'm trying to say is that at the end of the day, I wanna uh, compact, like I gather all the, the results from you guys, and then I'm gonna give it to, give it, give it the, 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 to the person who engaged in the exhibition in, the, in this conference. So I think this is a really good opportunity, right? So to, to actually you guys work in a international conference. Yeah, so just keep in mind. And then also we have an additional note, as I said, but um, for those who are really interested in data science, yeah, it's beyond the visualization or things like that. You guys need to learn like a NumPy or Pandas, which is um, sort of um, library, Python library. They specialize in dealing with metrics or um, from simple data processing in a statistical way or uh, the, the machine learning or cycling learning. You guys can actually take advantage of the existing machine learning or uh, statistical analysis tool um, that actually need like a, some of the format of an umpire, two or three dimension or multiple dimension of the data. So pandas or numpies actually help you guys to you know, some sort of um, metrics computation. But in our workshop, we are not going to use it because I feel like it's, it's actually no good um, practice. So what I wanted to do is uh, you guys can make your own sort of, you guys version of the Panda or NumPy because, you know, otherwise 
we just use the, the, the library as a black box, which is no good, actually, at the end of the day. And then also, uh, there's some feature reduction things, uh, but I could, just a simple link. So I'm just uh, leave some keyword that you need to take a look at it at the, at, uh, after this workshop. Okay. And then lastly, so uh, we're dealing with the data, right? But at the end of the day, we always need to visualize and to understand what the data tell us, right? So um, the other way of the looking at the data is uh, like, a, you know, revealing some patterns. So in this case, we, many people talk about machine learning, deep learning, neural network, things like that. So particularly, we are focusing on something, let's say visualizing on the web. So we have a one nice, uh, fantastic uh, machine learning library developed by Google. So basically, you know, TensorFlow is one of the you know, popular framework for machine learning. And then also at the same time, they um, sort of uh, developing on the parallel way, the TensorFlow JS. So meaning that you don't need to um, convert data to, to the Python to train or um, make a, your own sort of a prediction model. So we have a TensorFlow JS, meaning that you can directly consume the data and visualize it on the web and then train the data and then reveal some result and then tra train or visualizing on the web. So everything is just, uh, can do one shot on the uh, web. Um, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah yes, hi, Andrew. Uh, thanks for the great course. I'm just wondering whether is it possible to use TensorFlow directly in a uh, Grasshopper or Dynamo? So I know I've used TensorFlow a lot in Google Colab and stuff, but I haven't really found a way to integrate TensorFlow inside Absolutely. the Python environment in, in Grasshopper. I would just like to check whether you have done anything like that and whether is it possible to do it. Yeah, to be honest, um, as far as I know, there is no direct way to use TensorFlow from Dynamo or um, Python, uh, the Grasshopper. But you know, Grasshopper Python is it's not actual Python. It's Iron yeah. Python, which is sort of like a, uh, the C sharp or like a Windows version of the Python. Yeah. yeah. But I saw, I Python yeah, I saw one guy who developed some sort of a Python. I, I can't remember the name. You guys can go to the Fruitful Rhino website. There's a plugin. So according to the guy who developed that plugin, he, he said like uh, we can use the NumPy or Pandas or whatever, you know, the inbuilt Python sort of uh, library. So meaning that I think in that environment, people can um, um, import TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow Python version, I guess. But otherwise, you know, in a real world, uh, we have like a backend and front end, right? So for example, the class of Python com uh, compile, I don't know, process some data and then push this data to the server on the web environment or whatever. And then the, in the, in the, the web environment actually you know, just pass this data from, from the uh, grasshopper to the, some backend, which is built by Python. Or is it like a, sorry, sorry to interrupt you again. I have quite a bit of question on this. So is it like a HTTP uh, get post request where you export the data from Grasshopper and then you send it to a like a Flask backend to process it using scikit-learn or TensorFlow so. and then you send it back to Grasshopper? Yeah, I think so. So I mean, it's not about like uh, I mean the you know all win all Windows software is built uh, on top of the Windows system like .NET or uh, .NET Core, right? So even the Grasshopper, um, you know. Actually, you can build your own plugin using the C sharp library. So in this case, you guys can access whatever the HTTP request or let's say socket, uh, socket uh, communication or things like that. So also, I, I did several projects to communicate the graph of data with the web environment. Maybe additionally, you can make some the other pipeline to push this the data from the web to, the, to your own server. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I, I'm not that kind of the, the backhand guy. So, but I guess um, there should be way, yeah. But I couldn't see any direct way to import it di and directly execute the Grasshopper Dynamo environment. Got it. And I don't think you can directly import scikit-learn as well, right? Yeah, Not correct. Into it. Got it. And do you have any resources to kind of do this HTTP requesting from GH to like a web backend? and then to process it using TensorFlow and send that back in again. Do you have any resources that I can read up on? Uh, to be honest, I never tried it before, but um, 
Several years ago, I used a socket I/O library to communicate between the grasshopper to, um, let's say, web. Yeah, and then actually, to me, uh, if I have project like this, I would you like to directly working on the web environment using the TypeScript that we're gonna learn. Also, we have uh, the TensorFlow JS, which is directly learned on your browser. You don't need to set up your own server or whatever. It's just uh, take advantage of the GPU by the, the browser. So I think this is what I can tell you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there should be a way and there, there are you know, some expertise who can answer the right question to you. But um, yeah, this is uh, sort of uh, my answer to your question. Got it, got it. Thanks yeah. very much. I'm good. Yeah, yeah no, we, can, we, can, we can talk about this interesting topic later. Yeah, great. Thank sure. you for the question. Thank you very much. Yeah. So anyhow, so we, we have a, this kind of additional uh, note. Uh, we are not going to uh, um, you know, learn and dive into this kind of things. I'm just leave this uh, as a homework to you guys. So um, I have two projects to overview. So let me zoom in a little bit. Great. Está la guía, ¿no puedes? Cuando termines tu juego. Sorry. Okay. The pre, uh, please, please mute your mic unless you want to ask something to me. Okay. Great. Yeah. So this is the one of my uh, the project to understand our built environment by the lens of the data. So in this project we collect lots of data. Let's say uh, there's two, two, two different types of approach. One is a top-down data, so meaning that the government or organization, they actually create some data such as the building energy and, our, and you know, population and land use, things like that. The other way around is you know, individual, I mean, you and me, actually we, produce data every day, every, every hours, right? So we collect this kind of data. Um, and also uh, we use the uh, Google Street Map um, image as a data set. So we dump all of the data and make a, a giant, you know, the CSV file, let's say. And then we can um, train the data in order to revealing some result what the data tell us. I mean, this is the little bit off topic of our uh, project, but what I'm trying to say is that there is data, we can import it, you can process it, we can visualize it. Yeah, this is what I want to tell you. And this is the, the other project, uh, which is a collaboration work with uh, uh, Dong Se Kim, who is a professor in the NIT. So what he does is uh, to uh, compare the, the perception of uh, two different area. One is the High Line in New York City, and the other one is the Seoul, uh, 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 Seoul Law, which is Korean language, anyhow. So they are very similar concept. So we actually parse the image that people take, and then parse all the string data, let's say like some you know, text data, and then we try to compare and what is the difference what kind of um, event can trigger this kind of emotional things. I mean, this is all about like uh, the, the reading the data thing. So if you guys are interested in, just take a look at this video and also there's some information on my website. So again, that one is also data. Even the image, you can actually extract numerical data, new, numerical information from uh, out of the image, meaning that it can compute even the image, okay? So this is nothing special. Uh, about that, that and this is the the sort of uh, important you know oh there's a chat yeah okay i think uh, let me give, give me time i need to rearrange a little bit okay uh, i just uh i just uploaded oh yeah oh yeah thank you yeah thank you thank you for sharing the information yeah so um yeah so yesterday as i said there's a lot of data, different types of data, and then also, you know, you know, in a big umbrella, there's three different types of the data structure, as I said, undata structure, or semi-structured data structure, and then, uh, sorry, un unstructured data structure, semi-structured data structure, and then structured data uh, uh, structure, structured data structure, yeah. 
So particularly, you know, CSV, I think uh, all of you guys know what is a CSV, right? So actually CSV is nothing special, just like that. It's two, two dimensional matrix. There's a row and column, there's a number or some character, let's say string in this case. We call this is the CSV, comma separate value. Actually, if you open this uh, CSV file to the text file here, what you can see is uh, just crazy text. Yeah, crazy text, it's nothing special. However, there's a comma, right? So individual comma indicating basically separate the data. So that's why we call it CSV, comma separate value. And then there's also the other way around, a little bit similar, TSV, text separate value. So in this case, they rather than the you know, comma, they have uh, some space using the tab. I'm trying to press my tab, it doesn't work. You know. But anyhow, you, you, got my, you got my point, right? So CSV file, it looks like the matrix, However, the uh, individual data um, are split by comma. Yeah, this is a CSV, CSV file. And then uh, we have a JSON file. Actually, the JSON is the stands for JavaScript object notation. So which has become a much more familiar, uh, uh, popular and famous than before. Because as I said, the web environment is getting bigger and local environment is uh, become you know um, replaced by the web yeah even even the guy you know i want to even if i use the grasshoppers or i wanted to use the tensorflow or some web environment to collect data or to process data visualize data with other people so i mean the javascript uh, object notation json files become the popular and the pythons also can produce the json file and then um you know not just process, you can actually create your own sort of JSON file. We're gonna revisit again. And the other one is the GeoJSON. So let's say GeoJSON is the uh, same as the JSON. However, you know, the JSON, as I said, it has a key and value. This is pair. This is uh, the rule, grammar. We need to follow strictly. Always key and uh, value, key and value. In terms of the structure, you guys can design whatever you guys want. Yeah. But however, the JSON, same as uh, GeoJSON is the same as JSON, but there's uh, some particular rule people designate. Yeah. They say, this is our rule. Yeah. If you want to create a JSON, GeoJSON file, please, please follow this rule. Otherwise, you know, there's no like a one standard format it become crazy, right? So GeoJSON, is a has a very standard like a uh, structure like this. So let's say um, okay, if you open the GeoJSON file in the text, um, the plain text editor, it looks like very same. But it it follow the rules. The rule is like it has a type, yeah, and the features, yeah. The inside of the features, it, it has a it it it, it has an array. The, in the array, they have a type, then geometry. The geometry has a, the other JSON. I know it's a little bit confused, yeah, but just get familiar with, yeah. I mean, the JSON has a, the, the other JSON format. The JSON format has a, the other list. Inside of the list, the other like a key value pair of information is living there. So um, the geometry actually have different types of geometry, points, line string, and then polygon. Let's say this is the just the point and the line and then area. We can also call it. Yeah. So if this is point, we assume that there's a coordinate key, right? And then the return value is going to be uh, longitude and latitude. Yeah. So y and x, not x y. Yeah. It's sort of a convention. Yeah. So in case that if you have the line string, yeah line string, we expect that there should be an array of two numbers. Does it make sense, right? Because line cannot define by one point, like a one X and Y. We need a multiple, like a series of the X, Y. So in order to draw the line, right? So here, this is the same as the, the point, but it has a multiple points. It makes sense, right? To, 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 to define the lines. 
And the polygon, polygon is the area, it's, it's very identical as the line string. However, we know the polygon is the closest, closest shape, right? So at the end of the day, we follow this uh, coordinate system to draw the line, and then we need to uh, come to the first um, the data in order to close the, uh, the, the, the line, it become area. Yeah. So other than that, it's nothing special. What you need to do is just get familiar with the structure because we know, oh, if this is point, we expect this number. This is a line string, we expect this number. This is the polygon, we expect the array of these two, two numbers. And then the, the first, the, the, the number in the first and the number in the, the last index need to be same. Yeah. So this is the all about like the like a description or sort of representation of the um, the Josephson's um, the format. Yeah. So let's jump to here. And then what else do we have for visualization, particularly for urban or landscape or geographical scale? Yeah. Obviously we have an image, right? So the remote sensing is uh, one of the very well organized and popular things. Even for the you know um, you know, um, it's not about like just Im simple image processing. It's more about like a remote sensing, as I said. So we have a set of the satellite image, and then by comparing the the color or um, the neighbor, I mean the configuration of the shape, we can predict something. Just think about like looking at the star in, at, at night. We just has a, like a little you know, night uh, light from the stars. So this is also part, uh, something like the remote sensing. So particularly, one thing I wanted to mention is that we have the D, E, and called uh, digital elevation models. So NASA has a lot of uh, the information about this kind of height map. Let's say so you know. Based on this kind of the image, we can actually regenerate the land. Maybe the landscape people get, get excited, but you know, so what I'm saying is that we have image data, so we can treat them in order to extract any other you know, necessary information that we're looking at. That we're looking for. Yeah. Any question? Uh, please uh, mute your mic uh, unless you want to ask something to me or say something to publicly. Great. So now we are listening to the workshop, which is you know going to be really fun compared to the past. I mean the yesterday. So the first one is the uh, oh, I couldn't remember the <laughs> Yeah so um there's a, first of all, there's a one link for the data structure. So it drives you to the, uh, the core app environment. So I'm going to click this one. So you can see. Um, hello. Hello. Yeah, so could you please mute your mic? Yeah, because uh, we get some feedback from, I don't know, one of you guys. So uh, if you wanted to say something to publicly, then yeah, then you, you guys can say, otherwise please mute your mic, please. Okay, so before we talk about the data structure, I just wanted to quickly, quickly, you know, um, uh, uh, revisit what we learned yesterday. So as I said, this is the A, B, C, D, E, F, that one, is actually one string because it has a single quotation, right? So if you import a CSV file or maybe plain JSON file, you need to rebuild the JSON anyhow. So this is the, let's say the data, I'm actually trying to mimic the possible data that you import. And then we have a special function called the split, which belongs to string. Then the input value is uh, some uh, is a sort of character. So on the basis of this character, we're gonna split the data. So this is I can print this. Yeah. 
yeah, what I expect is uh, this is correct. This is just one single string. Yeah, this is one single string. And then I using the split uh, inbuilt function, I want to split the text by comma because we're going to deal with a comma separate value. Then it return a array of, of the data. Yeah. So now this is the array. So we can make some loop or we can index the data by doing this, like uh, indexing. Let's say maybe two. Yeah. And then we're going to print the C, right? Because this is uh, the uh, zero base, zero, one, two, right? As I said, the zero base indexing system. So, and then the other, uh, this is the, just array. We directly create the array, right? The one dimensional array in this case. The same as before, it's nothing special. But it's getting confused, right? This is the two dimensional array, yeah? Actually, in order to uh, deal with the data, uh, sometimes you guys face like more than 10 dimension or 100 dimension of the data. So um, I, I think the getting familiar with the, the dimension, creating dimension or decomposing the dimension is a really important skill in terms of the dealing with the data, particularly for visualization or the filter out the data and things like that. So it's nothing special. You need an almost a scale bracket, right? Actually, I can make a, the three dimension like this. I can make a four dimension like this. Yeah, let's just simply add one more of the scale bracket. But keep in mind, uh, this is the, um, you need to create your own sort of rule. It's the dimension, I mean, the less dimension is always better. Yeah, so anyhow, so this is a two dimension. Yeah, so, so that I am able to make a double for loop to visit individual um, the, the elements inside of array or array, right? So here, so what I expect is, if I print, what I expect is, this is the first, let's say, item, which is, which is array, and then this is the second item, which is also array, inside of this array, right? So basically, what it does is uh, it gives us uh, the, the, the other dimensions, which is either item or the list. But we know this is a list because it's a two-dimensional array, right? So that I create the, um, the other loop, right? So the first loop, you're gonna return this one. This value is goes to i, right? And then the i itself is uh, this array. So we're gonna loop like a one, two, three, three times, and then if the, the loop is done, and then we uh, go back to this array again, and then this data give us the other uh, the data in that array. And then four, five, six is goes to i as a second round in the, in the loop. And then the i has a four, five, six, and then they, they give us the four, five, six in order. So if I do this, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so this is the sort of how we, you know, uh, loop through double, uh, like a two-dimensional array using the double for loop. Yeah. Um, this is the, uh, the dictionary, right, that we learned yesterday, right? It's nothing special. It has a curly brace, right? So I have a curly brace here and the other curly brace here because whenever you open the curly brace or a scale bracket or a parenthesis, we must close, otherwise, otherwise the code is going to be break, okay? So we know how we construct a dictionary, right? Key value, key value, right? So if I press shift enter, and then it gives us this kind of a, a dictionary, let's say, yeah? So in the Python, the dictionary, is a, as I said, is a, we can convert dictionary as a, a JSON file, okay? For example, so there's a, some additional link, JSON, JSON link. If you click it, this is a sort of a, the useful tool to validate, is it a validate JSON or not, okay? So I'm going to copy this file and then paste the JSON uh, the link and then uh, click the validate JSON stuff. Oh. They claim this is not a validate JSON file. 
because I think I need to get rid of this one. Let me try again. Okay, this is valid JSON. This is just for checking purpose. And also, let me do something a little bit um, differently. So I'm gonna remove this double quotation. And then I'm gonna give you basically replace double quotation with the um, single quotation here. Yeah, I mean, in the Python, there's no error. It's meaning that this is the validate syntax. Yeah, in the Python environment. I'm, I'm gonna copy this uh, the strings and paste it and then try to validate. No, they couldn't understand because we need to, uh, they always expect like a double quotation for the JSON file. I mean, just for you guys' information, there's a lot of things happening like this. So I couldn't count. Even for me as a real world, uh, whenever I face, there's always error. I'm trying to understand error and then fix the error. So I'm just thinking, just in case, um, this is also a very common error for beginner, you know. So anyhow, I'm gonna come back to the double quotation. Yeah, so basically we create a dictionary, which is a, uh, very identical as JSON file. So I'm directly, directly using for rule and uh, using this, uh, the, uh, uh, with this um, dictionary. And then I value, is going to be this key, key number. So let's say we can actually print it. Print I. Yeah. So I receive like uh, NJ, MJ, DJ, right? It's because this is uh, the key of this dictionary, let's say JSON object, right? So it, with this, uh, uh, the, let's say ID or key value, we can directly ask value of this object, let's say um, dictionary. I mean, the reason I'm saying it's different term is because the, based on the different people's domain, they call it sometimes object or dictionary or hash map. Yeah, but yeah, we can call it dictionary for, for the, for the um, Python environment. So this is the, how, uh, the example how we construct a JSON file or dictionary file, okay? Um, so really simple. I encourage you guys to uh, revisit and then type in, you know, so because of the limited time, so I think I need to jump to um, our next example. So the CSV grasshopper things, okay? If you open the file, the second file data manipulation CSV file, so you guys get this definition, yeah. But I'm for sure, most of you guys has a, like an angry component in that Python component because the, 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 the link was broke, break. So you need to download, um, um, I guess, you need to download the, the data file. So inside of the data set file here, there's a, some CSV file, JSON file, GeoJSON file, and image file here that we're gonna use the, 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 the example, uh, with the example, okay? So, so that's why I make uh, these two components, just in case that you guys break this uh, um, um, sort of the, the component, so don't worry about it because I duplicate this data and then click the right button and then there's a menu like the internalized data. So in this case, we don't need to worry about the, the data outside of the classroom, okay? So I, so this is the, actually the starting point, anyhow. So now, um, if you press Control Alt in the keyboard and then press left left button on top of any component in Grasshopper, they give us sort of a, the, um, the the health like a, where is the component basically. So I use this uh, the geometry. No, I forgot. Okay, primitive and file. So I uh, just simply import the Boston Energy CCD file to here, yeah? And then let's double click this component here. So I, I actually like to compose the, the individual task in different uh, Python components so that you guys are easy to follow the individual components, yeah? So um, luckily, as I said, the Island Python, let's say Python in Grasshopper, they have their own inbuilt function, just like print 
length or type. Yeah. So we have a open function. You guys don't need to understand what what it does. Um, what is this? Yeah. But at least we know you know what the, the open function does, right? So it need a, it need a, a two parameters. One parameter is a path that we're gonna inject from this uh, component. So basically this path, right? And then the R means like a lead or write, it's W. But we, we, we just wanted to lead, right? So this is just a syntax. I actually, I couldn't memorize. Whenever I need to open the JSON file, I just uh, search it and then copy this uh, line of code to my code. Yeah, you don't need to worry about like memorizing something. So just understand the flow of the data. This is actually really, really important, okay? So once we, we open the, uh, the path using open functions, and then the file has a special object, like let's say class, yeah? And then the class has their own definition or own parameter or functions, we actually execute or um, approach any other property belongs to that class by put the, put the dot, dot notation. And then the read line is uh, somebody who, uh, somebody built yeah, in order to process. So we just simply execute. And the read time value, because this is a function, right? So function value, we can expect like there's, there should be some return values, right? So we have a return value. The return value is going to be assigned inside of the lines, yeah? And then this is sort of a syntax we must follow. Since we open the file, we need to close the file. Otherwise, the, the other software cannot open, yeah? This is some of like a very, um, um, the OS operating system level of um, problem, I don't know, yeah. So now, we are nicely, you know, extract the line of string. So I'm going, I, I really wanted to print whether it works or not, right? And then I'm using simple for loop and then using the print function, yeah? But the interesting thing is that, oh, NJ, you said the function always need to follow the parentheses, but there's no parentheses. What's wrong with you, yeah? You guys can say it like that. But the problem is that right now, I don't know, maybe the Rhino version 7 or 8, they're gonna use the latest version of Python. But the Python 2.x, let's say 2.1, 2.3, 2.4, 2.x, they actually don't need to use the parentheses for the print function, okay? However, after version 3.x, 3 version, they, they become a little bit strict. We need to follow. So I think the best, let's say, mm -hmm practice is uh, the always append the parentheses, okay? And then uh, I'm just want to print the, 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 the data, the inside of the line variable, lines variable, because the lines variable has a multiple line, yeah? And then uh, I just simply print it out and then I just uh, uh, extract, yeah? Uh, uh, extract the data to the, uh, uh, sorry, the lines to the data because I create the data here. So I can say uh, here, my data, yeah, by press right button. If you zoom in up, you can see the plus and minus button to, in order to you know, remove or insert particular uh, the, 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 the outlet, let's say. So you can say my data, absolutely good to go, correct. So, since we print this out, so we can see what is the output. Let's say drag a little bit here. Yeah, okay, great. So, what is this? Yeah, the Boston Energy stuff. So, I'm going to open the Boston Energy things here. Yeah, here, uh, no. Okay. Where are you? Okay, here. So this is a CSV file number one. This is, it indicated one line. This is actually one line. This is a, the other line, yeah. Okay, let me change something. I mean, this, okay, I'm turn off the water wrapper so we can drag the line. 
Yeah. So this is the raw data that you can download from website or I don't know, from your client. So it literally just, just print the individual lines just like this, right? This is basically the same. So now we know this component is simply import csv file and then give us the actual string data to us, yeah? And then this is the, uh, the, the other component after that. So now we know this data, this data is simply this one, right? Okay, just I want to make double check. <laughs> so here, um, so does anyone predict what it does? This is a very simple stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, as I said, this is the data list. Let's say two dimensional data. Yeah. It makes CSV file from the data. Exactly. Yeah. So um, for those who are already familiar with the grasshopper, we have a, there's a two lines, right? These two lines indicating I'm sort of a uh, list or, or matrix or whatever. If there's one data, this is one single line, just like that, one line, yeah? So now, this is two lines. Oh, this is the, I don't know what is, the, what is this, but at least I know the types of data structure. Correct. So I am click the right button on the top of this data, and then I need to switch the list uh, access, yeah. So now we received, let's say, uh, in this case, we receive these types of data in one shot, uh, in one shot, yeah. So now the data zero means I want to I want to select the first color the first color law first law, yeah. In this case, I, I think I can open the um. Where is uh, my Excel file here? Yeah, this is first hand data. So in this case, I select this law, yeah, because uh, as I said, always we are zero base, zero base. I mean, so I extract. Uh, these strings in one shot, yeah, because they are concatenate. They are just one string, actually. Okay, so I try to index particular item inside of the list, and then using the split function, yeah. So I'm gonna split by comma, right? Because we know this is the CSV file, right? So then simply I wanna um, export this result to this index, yeah? So in this case, it gives us this, yeah, this array, like the first one is empty, site, post, text, years, all the way down the water, right? So let me, you know, figure out uh, the compare with this data. Yeah, the first one is the empty, yeah, you are correct. And then you can go all the way to the left, this is the, the water things. I'm, 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 a, I'm a not like the energy um, person, expertise. So I have no idea what it does exactly, uh, but I don't know. This is the, the data, the last column inside the, uh, of this, the first you know, column, let's say the zero index. So now we know this component is basically print the whatever shape by the first column because of first, I'm sorry, first law, the first law is always index, right? It makes sense, right? This is very simple. Like uh, this data is basically uh, address, right? This data, yes, no, it's like a, a binary question, Boolean, yeah, true, false. This value is a reported color. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can predict. So we can, um, let's say, extract the index, columns index, yeah. And then this component, we can open. So what I'm trying to do is that we have a CS3 file and how we decompose and extract value that we are looking for. Yeah, it's nothing special, okay? So in this component, 
they, it, uh, what it does is uh, it try to extract position information because you know the, without the position like uh, x or y or longitude or latitude or whatever two number there's no way to visualize on the map okay so let me open and um, like um, zoom in a little bit you know what this one is a very simple things that we already know uh, learned the first um, the workshop. So th the problem is that we are not getting familiar with not that much. That one is the problem. What I'm saying is that this syntax is really simple, just simple for loop, and then we can use the, the split function in order to you know decompose the one giant string, and then if the giant if the index is the the, the um, if the column if the data is the position data then we're gonna store inside of the array this is nothing special other than that so um we have uh, the data from here we call it this is raw data yeah and then i'm gonna start from the the first um the the number in a column do you know why does anyone help me because the, the, the zero index, the first column, and then the first row, I'm confused, I'm sorry. The first row, it has nothing to do with the actual data. This is just the index, right? So we wanna, the data we are interested in is the from here to all the way down, yeah. So that's why I use number one, yeah, index here. And then uh, the length data means, I don't know, different fifth VPI, uh, different different CSV file has a different length of the the data. You know, data science people they call this observation. So let's say we had one uh, one thousand eight hundred twenty observation. So basically, we 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 measure the the length of observation here. Okay, let's say we can call row or observation. Anyhow, so we we create the some of a simple for the algorithm what it does is uh, as i said the first is index we're gonna skip it we are not interested in it. but after that we're gonna we want to loop through at the end of the, the the observation right so and then the, every every time every iteration we are going to have this giant string so again we need to use the split function right and then we basically uh, um, decompose the giant string by the comma, and then the row gonna be uh, the list, right? And then here's a here's a here's a things like a there's a two or one. We explicitly index. So what is the, the data in, inside of the this uh, index here? So. Let's say this is a zero, right? One, because we are always starting from zero index, zero, one, two, right? So this is the latitude, longitude. This is a latitude. No, come on. No, sorry. This is a longitude. This is a latitude. Yeah. So um, if you are a bit confused, there's a really easy way. Just go to Google Maps. Actually, this is what it, what it does. So this is LA, my town. This is my home. So if I press my mouse on top of the Google Map, and then they give us the longitude, the latitude, longitude. Yeah, the lati This is the longitude. This is the latitude. Okay. So here, this is the long uh, the latitude, longitude. Longitude is basically stands for x because it's the longitude and the latitude. So think about the globe. Okay. So three, uh, no, sorry, zero, one, two, two become x position, right? And zero, one, two, three, three indexing in order to get the y position, yeah? So here, we basically split um, uh, the, the, the longitude, and then this is stands for the latitude. And then as I said, this is, it looks like number, yeah? 
it just looks like a number. I mean, obviously this is a number, but once you import the C C S V file, the Python considers this is as a string. Yeah. So we need to convert this string number is a float number. Yeah. And then that one is actually number after this execution. So we simply print longitude and latitude. And then before starting this kind of the loop, I create the list. Yeah. And then I, uh, accordingly, I append, I append the data in, inside of the list so that we are able to get the latitude and longitude. Correct. So let me visualize in this data as a panel. This is longitude. This is the longitude and latitude, right? So let, let me come here. So the zero index means, let me go up. This one, right? This number must be identical with this number. And this number gonna be same as, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, this number. Okay, you guys can follow me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a big, little bit confused. But one thing I think I I I I need to mention is because uh, once I expanded the column, oh, let me actually compare the data because I want to make a correct things to you guys. Okay, so. Uh, I think this is one of my mistakes. Yeah, please focus with me. So if you index 0, 1, 2, we're gonna get this number as one string. And then it also has a, the other comma, right? And then also we need to split this data by comma. And then this one string data become two data. Right? This is the longitude, this is the latitude. So anyhow, I mean, this is, a, it all depends on how the raw data looks like. Yeah. So the, the important thing is that using simple for loop and split, we are smartly, you know, extract the necessary information to visualize it. In this case, latitude and longitude, it's nothing special. Yeah. And then we have these two number. Yeah. And then let, let me click this uh, component here. So um, this is a little bit weird thing here, right? Import, yeah? Import, meaning that we want, we want to import some library that somebody built already out there. So for example, do you guys know how, you, how who, who, who built this uh, line of script syntax? I have no idea, but I'm, 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 I'm sure the manual company, one of the, one of the developers developed their own library, right? And then you automatically import in the Python environment. And Python, the math is sort of the inbuilt Python uh, library. So that by simply, you know, um, um, typing like import Linux script as RS, meaning that using RS, RS that we can, we can access all the functionality that grasp the, the, the developer uh, create already in the, in the manual content, for example. Okay, let's say if I do like math, there's a cosine, sine, tangent, power, whatever function that you need to uh, utilize to process the mathematical equation, there's a package. So here, and also this is a definition, right? That we learned that thing, what is definition the yesterday, right? So just forget about this complex the, the equation. The most important thing to understand the function is that what is out input, yeah? And the what is output, that's it, yeah? So uh, just forget about the, this function here. We create the point list, empty list, okay? And then we get the, the latitude, the longitude. One thing for sure is that um, the length of these two array must be same. 
this is actually really, really important for the software engineer. So because we create the pipeline and then the same for loop create the identical uh, the data structure with the different information, right? But the, for, for sure, the length of, length of the data gonna be the same. So that's why I only use the latitude. It's, it's okay, you can use the long here, capital L or N, because we need to match this, uh, the character and with this character. Yeah, and then this, what it does is basically in given the length of the data, we need to make a full loop. In this case, 1819 loop happening. And then we use, basically we dump latitude, longitude data to the Makita projection function. And then it give us some return value. Yeah, I mean, um, the projection is a little bit important thing. So uh, I think that there's a different types of definition of a projection uh, for the machine learning or data scientists or cartographies. But for the mapping wise, the projection is more about coordinate system. Yeah. So now we are relying on the Cartesian coordinate system, right? This is the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, where's my, uh, give me point. Okay. Yeah, this is point, right? This is X and Y and Z. Yeah, this is the coordinate system. Yeah, but based on the different coordinate system, even if we have a same X and Y, the final visual representation is going to be different. Let me show you something to you guys. So this is the projection. Actually, I, I have been built multiple projection, but it has something to do with my um, the work in S3, which is a confidential project. So I couldn't expose this kind of information to you guys, but at least we know uh, what the projection is, right? So for example, this is my number, right? Okay, click. This is my number, yeah? Along to the latitude. With the projection, with the projection, probably a laser around here, right? So in the screen position, this is X and X, right? Uh, sorry, this is X and Y. So in the camera, camera graphics, um, let's say, yeah, let's say, let, let me narrow it out. Like a web graphics, this is always a zero, zero, X, Y. And then you increase X here. Let's say 300 pixel for along X axis. This is the 200 pixel along Y axis. Correct. This is the uh, 300 X and the 200 Y, right? So there's a three different number. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit confused, but bear with me. The three different number, the first one is a latitude longitude. That is actually really important information. Yeah, and then we need to project this information with given the coordinate system. Yeah, so for example, if I, if I put the, this number uh, point here, yeah, Maybe there's a, okay, let's say I can make a new point. 10 by five by three, yeah? Uh, sorry, point, 10 to one, yeah. Where's my point? <laughs> Am I wrong? Okay, just click hit the point, and then if I select, and then simply looking at the, um, uh, the property panel here. Okay. Uh, here, okay. So actually, you know what? This point is uh, representing by this coordinate system, the, the, the Cartesian coordinate system. This is the X and Y and Z things. So again, we have a latitude and longitude. And then throughout the projection, we get we get the result in that coordinate system. For example, let's say in this, to try to think about like uh, the LA here, right? The LA position is always different based on this this coordinate system, right? And at the, at, as a, as a last step, we need to convert the other way 
uh, the projected position to the screen position. Actually, you don't need to worry about it. I, I already reserved for our project, but I'm just describe uh, what happened behind the scene, okay? And then this LA here, this is the X, let's say 100 along the X axis, and then maybe 50 along the Y axis. There's a three different coordinate systems, actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you guys don't need to understand for now, but I'm just describing what the projection, okay? So we have a latitude longitude projection. There is a Mercator projection. The Mercator projection is one of the famous projection here. Actually, we have a Mercator projection here. Uh, it should be. Really? Okay. Mercator projection is one of the famous and, you know, um, and very, um, you guys get familiar with this map, right? So can you see the like a white line? Yeah, I mean the all, along the x axis, let's say longitude wise, is always even. Yeah, but the, the, the look at the, the, the y axis called the latitude. The resolution is different, right? So if you go to the, the each polar area, and then the the the, the, the size of the, the rectangle is become like elongate, right? Because this is a characteristic of the Mercator projection. Yeah. So in this case, we can preserve the, the angle. Yeah. However, we, 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 we give up to preserve the area. So what I'm trying to say is that each projection has their own purpose. What is the sort of, um, um, the, uh, I mean, let's say, um, okay, <laughs> where is this? Is the, um, yeah, this is different types of the, the projection. And then, as I said, it has a pros and cons. Yeah, let's say pros and cons. So sometimes you need to give up something in order to emphasize something. So for example, you are the captain in a ship, right? So you always want to looking at the shortest path. Maybe in this case, you don't need to worry about like the area. I'm always focusing on the angle that I need to go directly, yeah? So in this case, what, what kind of projection is better? I mean, it's, it, it depends on your, what kind of uh, data you, you want to visualize on the screen, okay? Maybe I, I'm, I'm too much deep, but yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, it's just, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really important concept for the visualization, particularly for the geographical visualization or urban design. Anyhow, so material projection is a, we, we, we do not need to understand. I, I just implement this um, sort of uh, the, the mathematics. You guys can uh, uh, feel free to use for your purpose. But this is the equation to compute the market, market projection. So latitude, longitude, and then give us the projection. And then using the RS. RS, as I said, this is a library developed by developer in the memory company. So RS start at the point. This is another workshop for the, the Rhino script. So I'm not going to talk about that one briefly, but what I'm saying is that this input is a X, Y, Z, and then it gives us point. Just like point, this point, like a GUI point. Yeah. And then I append this point to the point PTF array. Yeah. And then I um, export this point to here. So now, Eventually, we get this point, but there's nothing, right? Uh, don't be panicked. So just click it, click the right button, and then click the zoom, and then we can zoom to that um, number. Because as I said, the, the Catania coordinate system, we are starting from zero, 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 right? But the, the, usually the geographical position for the GPS is uh, along the x-axis is like minus 108, right? And the plus 108. And then the, along the, um, the latitude, and we have a, a plus 90 and then minus 90. So this is all about the, the representing the globe. This is the sort of a promise, like a convention we need to follow. So in this case, uh, this position is a little bit weird of the, the Cartesian coordinate system, but, but it's not important for now. So what I'm trying to say is that we have the CSV data, we expose this data, uh, decompose this, uh, this data, and then get the latitude and longitude, and then we can convert this, uh, not convert, we can create a point out of these two numbers, and then we can see, right? 
So I don't know um, how you guys um, utilize the, 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 the building footprint or whatever. So maybe in this case, personally, I recommend you guys to go to OpenStreetMap. Yeah, OpenStreetMap is uh, um, it's, it's very uh, you know it's good sort of open GIS program. So you can just uh, extract some particular boundary by drive rectangle, and then we can uh, give us some CAD file, a like building footprint or highway, freeway. I don't know. There's a lot of like a sort of parameters, but at least we are able to get the, some boundary condition uh, of the city, and then we can overlay on top of this data. Yeah, this is one way of doing this. And then this is we now we visualizing a simple point here. Actually, this is not that fancy. This one, this is only just point. Yeah. So this is a uh, uh, we visualizing the position data just for now. And then I'm 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 not going to dis describe it deeply because they are very similar. Also, we have very you know, limited time. So um, this is what it does is a based on the index. Based on, based on the index, uh, I really want to maximize the windows, but okay. So based on the given index number, the same operation going to be going to be executed. Okay. So here, the same index, yeah. As I said, the index number is really important. They are same, right? But think about this is zero base, as I said. Yeah. So they are basically the same number. So we can play out with the this. Um, let's say uh, index uh, number four, um, uh, number, uh, number seven, right? In this case, number seven stands for something emission, I guess, yeah? And then the other dimension, the 12, what is 12? Reported or, reported or not, but this is final information, so I'm not going to use this information. Maybe other information, it's a numeric information here. So this is like a histogram. Uh, this is not about like a data uh, intensive course. So I'm not going to talk about like a medium and Gaussian things and how we dealing with outlier data, things like that. We are just want to focus on the data visualization things. So if you guys are interested in just uh, uh, the, the search, like um, the data pre-processing things, anyhow. So I use two more dimension on top of the position. So one dimension is gonna be visualize the radius of the circle. Yeah, and the other dimension is going to be um, used for color. Yeah, so the, the result is looks like that. Yeah, and then also you can resize the size. Yeah, I mean, the old freedom is it depends on the, your sort of uh, the strategy to visualize. As I said, visualization is not something you know, convert to numeric numbers from the, the visual language. It's more about like a linear language where extract the meaning. So in this case, human uh, you know, experience with insight in your domain is really, you know, become uh, important. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, uh, because I'm just uh, used to indexing quickly. So some bit, we need to visualize in the data like a medium, average, and then uh, an outlier, and based on that one, so we can make a, the other sort of a normalization techniques can be applied. Oh, uh, Andrew. Yep, yep. Sorry. Is there a particular component that you enable preview for or something? Because I'm not seeing the points on, on the Rhino canvas. Canvas here? Yeah, so I'm not seeing these points on my canvas. Is there a particular component that you disabled the preview or something? Oh, I see, I see, okay. So here's some. Maybe zoom out super far. It's, yeah, it's yeah, pretty far yeah. away from X and Y zero. Okay, so I, mean, I think there's a two way. Yeah. So maybe if you, you, you uh, uh, the camera position is uh, toward the 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Could you? Oh, uh, yeah. Is that the origin? Yeah. And also the other way around is that I usually select all the components. And the click right button, oh, sorry, click right button on top of the, the, the component is a preview option. So if you have like a light gray, it is a activate for preview. And then dark gray, they are deactivate for preview. So in this case, I can select this, uh, the draw only, uh, only draw preview geometry. If you click it, whenever you click the component, if they have a data to visualize, they already visualize. The reason I cannot see is because I need to zoom in. So I select this component and click right button. 
and then press the zoom here, and it's jump to that uh, uh, geometry, right? So if I select this one, I can see, if I select this component, and I, I can only visualize point because this component is just, as an output, it just gives us points, yeah. So as a, as a result, uh, I'm going to turn off this one and then select all the component, click the right button, and then I'm going to turn on preview and, oh, sorry. I'm going to turn off all the preview, yeah? And then I want to only turn on this circle and this color. Let's see, actually, I circle. I, I actually, I don't need this one. Yeah, this color. Because this color is a, has a the circle which has a different size. So now I am able to see the circle, different color. It has like a three different dimension, right? The first dimension is the, let's say, position. And the second dimension is the color. The third dimension is about the radius of the circle. Does it make sense? So I highly recommend you guys to play with and then understanding what the component does. Just, just, just for fun, yeah. So we have um, very limited time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, let's jump to um, other example. Let's say, let me check. Actually. Um, yeah, CSV, we, we, we learned something about CSV and then jump to JSON file here. I think uh, number three here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to describe it really quickly. <laughs> so here, this is the, uh, the way we, um, we import the JSON file as a, the, the string, it's, which is identical as the, 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 the dealing with the CSV file, okay? And then we have a special function like JSON. Yeah, like JSON. So this just, just follow it. JSON has a, the load uh, function. We need to dump the JSON. And then it gives us the, give us a JSON object. So as we already learned, right, this is a sort of a dictionary. So if you, if you uh, make a photo with dictionary, the item is always key value, right? Right, so that's why we are able to get this number, uh, this data. So actually, the JSON file is like this. Uh, where are you? Here, yeah. This is the JSON file that I create, which is about the third place in Cambridge area. So um, this is the, as I said, we have a curly brace, meaning that this is the sort of um, dictionary, and the dictionary has a, the other dictionary, yeah. And then the other dictionary has a, actually, it has a list, yeah? Inside of this list has a, the other dictionary, it stands for um, um, like a latitude and longitude. It can be customized whatever you want, actually. So, I mean, I make a, some, uh, like a parser in order to uh, extract the information from the Google API. And then some Python code, what it, does here is basically decompose the structure, yeah? So anyhow, so in this fashion, we are able to get the, the index of the, the third place here, yeah? And then this component is basically give you index and then, and then pass the latitude longitude, yeah? It's nothing special. So in this case, 23, right? What is 23? Stadium, yeah. So we're basically trying to pass the position information passed by the keyword, which is, which is uh, the stadium, yeah. And then latitude, longitude, you can visualize it. Click the right button and then zoom. Yeah, this is the Cambridge area, actually. So other than that, the other way around is that um, this is the special component. I know we have this uh, category. But is there any category that contain C-A-R word? And then we can just extract the information. So in this case, we have this kind of data. So let's say, let me read a little bit. Car rental, 
which include the car, right? Hair care, which is actually is, is, is wrong, right? Because it's, we, we, are, we are not looking for care, but it has a car, C-A-R. That's why they, they um, 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 collect this information, right? So we have a car dealer, car repair, things like that, car washer. So we have a, this, this many data, and then we can visualize it. So we actually we can just the, um, inject this, in, uh, this index to this index here. Yeah. So now, this point, this is the actually uh, Cambridge area. This is Boston. Yeah. This is the river. So we have this data. Yeah. So I mean, based on your your um, visualization process or, or purpose of the visualization, you guys can create your own sort of the algorithm. Like uh, let's say we wanted to visualizing a car washer which is closest to, to some particular area, let's say um, park, for example, or residential place, for example, or stadium, for example. This is all about like a, uh, the strategy to visualize or tell how, okay? So this is nothing special. I mean, this is the, 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 the data that we did, just did with the, um, the CSV file. This is a JSON file and car things. So uh, please uh, uh, visit, revisit the graph of definition and then play with it, mesh with it, and crack the component and then try to fix component, okay? Let's jump to other example. The five here. So, um, okay. Um, what do we have for here? Yeah. So we have a GeoJSON. The GeoJSON, which is about the earthquake data on the globe. So we have a data here, yeah? And then this is nothing special, as I said. I mean, this is special, but we already know it, right? So as I said, um, you know, uh, where is our GeoJSON? Yeah, GeoJSON here, right? It has a particular structure. So I'm just follow the structure in order to decompose the data. So we have a feature and geometry and coordinate, and then we just pass the coordinate, the data. And then particularly, I want to pass uh, the magnitude and significance of the earthquake as other dimension to be visualized. Correct. So um, there's a value here. It's nothing special, and then just visualizing like this. Click right button and zoom here. So as I said, you know, this is minus 180, yeah? And this is plus 180, yeah? And then this is 980 plus, this is minus 900. This is sort of like, let's say normalized, not normalized, but let's say we can consider normalized value. And then um, I guess this is the, uh, it's a California, I think. It's bearing area. This is a Japan, I guess. If you override the actual the geographical base map, then this is correct. And then not only that, but also we visualizing the circle. Uh, the circle is about value B. What is value B? Yeah, significance of the earthquake, yeah? And then the spikes, the line spikes is about magnitude. So this is a little bit harder to see, so that I actually apply some simple, you know, multiplication to visualizing the, uh, the magnitude. And that one is a significance. Ooh -hoo. yeah. So there is a lot of way to um, um, maximize or minimize um, the data difference. There's a lot of technique, but I'm not going to talk about it because it's a little bit off topic. But what I'm saying is at least we can see the, the, the position and the, magnet, uh, the magnitude and the significance of the earthquake at once. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm just keep looping and keep like uh, talking same thing in a little bit different way, right? 
And then, as I mentioned, projection. So I just use the Cartesian coordination system here, right? But what if I use a spherical projection? Yeah, which is really simple. So what I did is, um, um, I mean, just we can share the result here. So the latitude and longitude is going to be exactly the same. Yeah, I'm not going to tweak the data. Data is just there as it is. So I'm just simply change the projection. I mean, what kind of projection is the best way to visualize that particular uh, uh, data set, for example? So in this case, obviously, we are dealing with the global data. So I'm just wrapping as a sphere. So as I said, like a 0, 0, and then one, uh, 180, and minus 180, 90, 90. I just like a remap based on the projection things. So this is the simple um, equation, not equation, it's like a mathematic plus minus and multiply things. And then so that we are able to get this one. As I said, this is the uh, uh, California area and then Japan and Singapore, uh, whatever, yeah. So this is the visualization about the geo, 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 um, um, JSON file. Let's, let's move to other example here. So, you know what? Not all data has, unfortunately, has their position data, like latitude or longitude, unfortunately. But however, there's a data, at least they have a zip code, right? So um, I actually created the, the, this kind of plugin. If you control out plus, this is the NJS, NJ Studio stuff, and there's mapping things. There's a component like um, the projection by zip. So this is the old zip file of the United States, and it gives us the actual the latitude and longitude. I select it, click like button, and then zoom in. And then you can see, uh, OK, something wrong. OK. Yeah. So this is the. This is a macular projection, as I said, macular projection. And then I'm visualizing all the zip code in the United States. Yeah. So there's a data that has, that has the, uh, the zip code rather than latitude and longitude. This is actually the example of the studio that I learned with the, the Dongsei Kim and, and, and our IT. So our site is like a union point in the message sets here. here. So the, one of the exercises at the time is to repress some shape file and then mapping and then describing and make some, you know, storytelling, you know, just the stu studio driven things, right? So this is the, the data, yeah, CCV file. And then I'm trying to visualizing the, um, the job. So for example, this job is uh, the, the lawyer officer. This is an architecture related job, okay? And then using this zip code, I'm visualizing like this. This is method test. So as you can see, the LED stands for the lawyer office, and the, uh, the cyan color stands for the, the architecture, like uh, the linear job, like construct or design or interior or things like that. So again, this is nothing special. What I did is uh, pass the, the, the zip file and then use this function in order to get the latitude to the longitude. Basically convert the zip, uh, zip number to the, the position number. Okay, let me jump to other example. We have five, right? Okay, there's no six, seven, nine, okay, nine. I think this is a sort of last example. So um, this example is um, something about the image processing. When you say image processing, there's a lot of things happening behind the scene, or there's a lot of people, different domain, like that. even you know, the autonomous vehicle, you fully, not fully, it's partially rely on the vision, computer vision stuff, like machine learning, or deep learning, or you know, deep fake, uh, deep fake changing face, or like a beauty model of your camera, for example. This is all about the vision, image processing. But that one is a particularly uh, focusing on the sort of mapping things, yeah? So um, let me, uh, uh, let's say, um, to think about the Photoshop, yeah? So I'm just embedding some Photoshop uh, functionality in the grasshopper environment, okay? It's nothing special. 
So now, here uh, we have an image path, and then you need to use this component. And then this component is actually visualizing this image. Yeah, it's nothing special. You can actually bring image by some plane here, I guess. This is an image plane. Yeah, but yeah, we basically import image as a mesh here. The second thing is that not only import, but also we can resize this image. So basically I import, this is the actual size, and then I try to resize. Because the image processing, sometimes we need to resize, like a resolution, yeah? Yeah? And then um, what, I, what, I, what, what it does is uh, I create the other custom Python, yeah? Here, so we have a point. Let's say this point, right? Um, okay, let me uh, actually, okay, okay, here. So I'm going to create a point here on top of this blue color and then grab it and then select it. Oops. Yeah, and then what it does is just like a, um, you know, extract the position which has a, a let's say, same color with a certain tolerance. So we have a tolerance here. So this is uh, something that you can take advantage of an image in order to mapping. Basically, we can create the data, actually. So on top of this data, uh, I mean, the data that you can download as a number or string from the local government or client or whatever, also we have uh, some image data. And then we can try to, you know, uh, like filter, filter the image on top of the data the, that you have. So in order to reveal something, it's all about the process and then the perspective of looking at the urban, okay? It's nothing special. I'm just giving you, give you guys tool and the thought process, yeah. And then again, we have a, we can resize here, and then wrap it, yeah? We can just extract the white color, become the torrents. Just think about the magic, <laughs> Just think about the magic selection in Photoshop. Yeah, it's not special. So uh, we have a two different image here. Ooh. Yeah, one is rabbit, the other one is the elephant, and then we have the branding mode. So, I mean, as a designer uh, or um, let's say not just competition designer, it's just like a pure architecture designer or um, the graphic designers, so the blending mode is really important. Blending mode is actually very precise, the color computation things. So there's like a dark mode and a bright mode and then the difference mode. So what I'm trying to say is that we have a different types of the, the image representation in the same image, uh, same location. So sometimes we need to... Uh, <laughs> some, sometimes we need to tweak the, the extract uh, the maximize the information that you are looking for. As I said, uh, I mean, the data processing, um, machine learning, all about the data is more about like uh, looking at the data. Yeah, how we look at the data, what angle. This is more about like, uh, it's, an, it's not about technical things. It's more like a strategy. Yeah, anyhow, so. Put the matter, stick the way. We can extend this component here. Right, so let's say I need a mesh here, and then yeah, the mesh is here, right? Yeah, okay, so we can just play with the some color. Diff okay. yeah. Maybe you can make a darken, maybe you can change it to a screen mode here. Yeah, so we can extract some different pattern, right? using this blending mode. So that's it. It's nothing special. Yeah? Just this is tool. So here we have an image and then also we have the, the, the function to invert image. Because the, sometimes the, uh, for the image processing, we need to find some combination to maximize the difference. So uh, there's a function that can be um, extract, let's say like this. Um, 
what is this? Uh, this is just a it's tolerance. It's like a, some functions in a Photoshop things, like a tolerance. And then we have a brightness contrast. Yeah. Again, as I said, this is the more about like a how we uh, maximize and how we reveal in the image by um, applying some color standard collection things. So we have hue saturation things here. I'm gonna quickly jump, I think special. And the other thing is that um, also, um, this is one thing I implemented. Um, where are you? Okay, come on. So you guys know the filter in Photoshop, right? Like sharpen or, or blur or image detect. This is all about the, 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 the filtering things. For those who are familiar with the machine learning, particularly the dim learning, so dim learning has like a multiple layers, the, 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 the network. The individual network extracts local features. So in this case, there's a, uh, you can actually customize your own the, 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 the uh, convolutional filter, like let's say in this case, three by three. So that actually this kernel is a loop through your whole image to extract the local feature to minimize the dimension. And then this, this local feature is basically the result. So that sometimes people machine learning or deep learning call it representation learning. So that's why people call it like representation learning anyhow. So I implement this kind of uh, the filter things for the image processing as well. So we have here, um, let's say, you can actually customize your own kernel to, to, to you know, maximize or revealing some pattern things, okay? However, we have here, oh, I don't want to select this. So we can, this is a normal view. Okay, let me, come on here. And then I'm going to turn off everything. Disable. Uh, okay. Uh, how can I turn off? Just lean over. <laughs> yeah. So we have here map. Preview. So. We, we, we can simply change the uh, different types of a filter, like a edge detection things. So again, we have a, a one image, like a, let's say one location with different representation, different color, where you can actually visualize your own sort of a data, and then you can consider this data as an image, and then you can give us some like a post pro, uh, production as an image processing to extract something. So most important thing is the strategy, how you visualize, what do you want to uh, found something, yeah? So, okay. I'm sorry. Um, are you okay? <laughs> because I'm dumped like different types of things at once. Um, okay. So, um, this is a sort of the other example, like how we extract some particular position with this image. Like we apply some filter or overlay, make some difference, or like uh, using the screen, we can maximize the color strengths and things like that. This is just an example that you can test. I'm not going to talk about deeply. Yeah, this is very self-explanatory. So there's a Python file. So you guys can just see what I did, it's, which is nothing special. It's more about like uh, filtering things. And then this is the, um, sort of example. So here we have image. Actually, this is not that good examples, to be honest, uh, because this is Boston area. Uh, oh, uh, I, I'm, I'm confused with the other example because I'm trying to apply the Boston and the New York City on top of it, which is actually no good practice. But what I'm saying is here, 
we have a different color variation, and then we can extract some particular things by um, just one simple image. So we can consider image as a data to be visualized, okay? So now, as a last example, um, again, we have this data. Yeah. Uh, this is data we can call it like a height map. So this color, uh, this this um, individual colors represent the height. So based on this color strength, we can rebuild three-dimensional uh, top, uh, top uh, topography. Okay. So this is the input image here. Okay, this is the input image, and then. The Python component gives us like a, this kind of a point cloud based on the um, the height, and then I give you some some. We can actually make them as a the surface, just like that, or we can a little bit you know uh, make them smooth, maybe too exaggerated, I guess, a little bit smoother. Then we can rebuild this kind of a uh, uh, the, the land by. Uh, out of uh, the height map. So just think about it. So this is uh, some, some geograph uh, geographical like uh, land data. And then on top of it, we can visualizing some CSV or JSON data or something. And then we can also actually, you know, override, I mean, the inspect the based on the, um, the, the CSV position or JSON location to particular slopeness over or some some in you know, a geographical relationship with this kind of the geometry data set. So um, what I'm trying to say is that um, we have a image. We can take advantage of the color difference in order to extract some information. On top of that, we can also rebuild 3D, 3D geometry, um, like a, let's say in the landscape in this case, out of this image. And also, um, this is the, the other implementation. Um, actually, this is the same implementation that I did. Um, we're going to leach this um, example maybe in two days or something. Because two days, I'm done for the Python with the, um, the grasshopper over mapping things, basically. So tomorrow, we are going to learn like TypeScript to visualizing something on the web environment, such as this. Uh, uh, like uh, let's say using the code pen here. This is all about like um, the TypeScript, which is something new, but don't worry about it. I'm gonna teach you guys um, with the Python syntax. So I'm, I'm gonna compare it. It's pretty straightforward. It's nothing special, but you know, you, know, you are here uh, to, to learn something new, right? So anyhow, this is the basically identical um, logic but a little bit different syntax against the Python that I did in this um, you know, the example here. So we can rebuild it. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm done today's uh, uh, workshop. So time is already up. Um, do you guys have any question? Hello there, do you guys still alive? <laughs> Um, I have a question regarding using Grasshopper um, to visualize um, geographic data point. So I, there's like other software that I can do the same thing, like QGIS. I'm just yeah. wondering what, what is the advantage of using Grasshopper and Rhino as opposed to some like, um, like GIS software? It depends on you. I mean, if the, if, if, for example, you know, I'm talking about the image processing, but we don't, right. need to, we, we don't need to use this image process because we have a Photoshop, right? But what if you wanted to integrate multiple things in the one, like a system, yeah? If the QGIS or ArcGIS open all the possibility to the user or to developer who wanted to develop their own research tool, which is great. But unfortunately, um, QGIS or ArcGIS has their own system or their own world. It's really hard to crack. Hmm. So, but the Python, the, the Grasshopper, even the Python, Python itself is just programming language. So meaning that 
whatever you want, you can customize it 100%. There's no sort of limitation. Only limitation is your imagination or your ability. It's, it's, it's like me, yeah, I'm still keep learning. So what I'm trying to emphasize is um, the QGIS support many you know, statistical or like geographical analysis tool to us. Yeah, we, can, we need to take advantage of it. For those who, 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 who can implement this kind of the logic behind the scene in the Python, the guy actually built a way better tool than the ArcGIS or QGIS. It depends on the how we look at, look at the tool. Yeah, so, so that's why I set up this workshop. I mean, maybe after, to, uh, after today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, we are really uh, work, uh, learn uh, how to create a point class or line class, which is very, very low level. So once my expectation, um, just my expectation, don't worry about it. My expectations at the end of the, um, the workshop is that you guys are good to go to develop all you guys' tool without any platform, without any other like a dependency. Yeah, this is, this is sort of my goal. Yeah. I see, thank you. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, uh, but it's, it's, again, it's impossible to you know, reach that point throughout the six days workshop. But my job is to like, uh, help you guys and then give uh, some my thought process and then my experience and then some library that I did and then just insight to your brain, yeah? Like uh, um, push your passion you know, to develop. Because the reason you guys are here is because you guys want to be a specialized person, right? In your area, right? It's not, it's not about just like become expert to use the Grasshopper or, or, or ArcGIS, yeah? This is just tooling, yeah? So more important things, the thought process and we, how we develop the, the, the research tool or the visualization tool itself. So once you reach that, that point, actually you can see a lot of things that are invisible for those who have no idea about just, just, just end the user. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I think today's workshop is a little better than yesterday, right? Because yesterday's weird uh, in that text and the space and the comma and you know print, real number strings. But um, you know, I recommend you guys uh, visit the, uh, the individual material and then tweak them or import your own custom CSV file or JSON file to play with. And then as much as you can try to break it and then yeah. solve it. Yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, I'm done. Um, any other question? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Looking forward to Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you Bye. and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye. 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 Nice. Thank you. Maybe we need to take a picture for all you guys. <laughs> wow, a lot of people were there. I didn't recognize 23. Wow. <laughs> Actually, it was 36. 36, really? Wow. Yeah. I didn't recognize it. Uh, I appreciate the, um, you guys' time. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate it. Thank you. Very much. Much. Because tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow exercise is a bit like a learning TypeScript, which is a little bit boring, but anyhow, you can go for it, you can make it, yeah. <laughs> Bye. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you, Bye -bye. Nice yeah. Thank you so much.